Hi everybody, welcome to the Just a Person podcast, a show that explores life's highs, lows, and in-betweens. I'm Madison, and this week I sat down with Skylar. We talked about her life as the biological child of foster parents, what it's like to have mostly adopted siblings, and why she thinks there should be more conversation around the role of an adoptive sibling. Thanks so much for listening, and enjoy the episode. Hi, Skylar. Hi, Madison. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, I'm excited. So here's how we can do this. I was thinking you asked me if we could discuss how we had first met. Well, not how we first met, but what happened when we first met. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So why don't you just go for it then? So Madison and I worked at the same ice cream shop. Well, that's where I first met you. You've been working there for a while. But yeah, I started was probably 2016 or something like that. Um, so I was a little 16 year old and we had no, I mean, I think I knew of you, but we didn't like really know each other. And so, yeah, we got scheduled to work together the first time. And I was like weirdly nervous, be- I think probably because I just didn't know you. But anyway, we like were sitting there and then all of a sudden she just was like pulled up this list of, I guess they were like first date questions or something on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Started asking me all of these really bizarre things like, do I believe in a soulmate? And that's really the only one I remember. But anyway, it was a great uh, first impression. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking about this because you asked if you could bring it up because it was it is weird. I'll give you that. But I was thinking, like, why on earth would I do that? That's so strange to do with something <laughs> you don't know that you just met and now have to spend like six hours with. Uh, Because it was just to us one on one with each other. And I think this is why is because that was like my third summer working there. So I kind of I think I've like kind of felt like I should probably say something to you first, because we know people in common, but I didn't know you. And the only thing I had ever heard about you was that you were nice, but very quiet and read a lot of books. (laughs) (laughs) And apparently go to bed early. (laughs) That you go to bed at like 8 p.m. That was all that I knew about you. I think I was like, okay, I had seen this list of questions. It was like going around the internet. Why it was a list of first date questions, I don't know. But I thought, and I was like, all right, if I feel like it's weird, I'm gonna, or if like no one's saying anything, because I feel like both of us could just sit there and not talk and be perfectly fine. Probably. I was like, okay, if something gets weird, I'll just bring up this list of questions. (laughs) And I think I was just like, hey, I have it for this list of questions you want to answer. But I don't think you even let it get weird. It just was like the person on the shift before us left. And then you were like, hey, let's get to know each other. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I don't know. How old would I have been? You were 16. I would have been 17. I don't know. That was a different life. (laughs) I tried to, I did go back in my social media and try to find this list because I was pretty sure it was in there somewhere, which was horrifying. So I'm sorry that you had to deal with that, but I did not find the list. That's a bummer. But anyway, I feel like it sparked a pretty good friendship. So. <laughs> it makes it makes a lot of sense knowing me now does it make sense that I did that do you think yeah I think so just very weird I don't know that's even for me a little bit weird but it is what it is uh so I was I was thinking instead um I get my my uh questions like at the, at the beginning of every episode I either think of them or I just find them online so would you like to answer one of those questions instead <laughs> sure <laughs> okay we make a whole episode just going through the list of questions. <laughs> All right, I'm picking it out of the hat here. Let's see what we got. I did come across in the in the list, though. I thought you'd appreciate this uh, online, some list of questions. And one of them was, you're in a room with $2 million in your doppelganger. What do you do? I was like, what? What? <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> Are those the only things in the room? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, here we go. If your food is bad at a restaurant, would you say something? Absolutely not. (laughs) Me either. (laughs) I just eat it. What do you do if someone gives you food and you don't like it? Like I'm at someone's house. 
or something. That's wor- That's much worse than a restaurant. At a restaurant, you can at least just take it home or something. Yeah. Toss it. I think I try to like like pick at it or like push it around enough where it's like spread out and it looks like I've eaten some of it. Or I'll like try to force myself to have a couple of bites. <laughs> I'll just shove it down. I don't care what it is. I will eat it. I will never ever say if I do not like something. I'll just eat it. I yeah. I won't either. I don't know. I can't remember the last time though that someone's like given me something that I really didn't like. I will say actually if it's someone that I'm like close with, I'll be like, yeah, I didn't really like that. But if it's like, I don't know, someone I don't know super well, I'm going to pretend to at least eat some of it. So besides working with me, which was obviously the highlight of your life, uh, what was your life like growing up? So I was born in South Dakota, um, grew up in Michigan. Um, I was a pastor's kid and I have, how many siblings do I have? Six siblings. I'm six of seven or I'm two of seven, I guess, if you're going in order. (laughs) There's so many. Um, So lots of loud and craziness. Um, And five of the six are adopted out of foster care. So that's been an exciting part of my life as well. But yeah, I grew up in Michigan, moved to Tennessee for college and have been down south ever since. So you have an older brother that's a biological sibling to you. When or how old were you guys when you uh, your parents started fostering children? I couldn't remember, but I've been working on some things with uh, like related to adoption and foster care for my job. And so when I asked my parents, they said our first foster kid was in 2003. Um, So I would have been three. My brother probably was four or five, depending on what time of year it was in 2003. Okay. So they were like fostering like pretty, how much older is your brother than you? Oh, 18 months older than me, I believe. So they that was like pretty quick, like right after, I mean, not right after, but pretty, was that something they wanted to do instead of having more biological children they wanted to start adopting? So I don't actually know how, I probably have asked them at some point and I just can't remember, but I believe that they just felt like God was calling them to kind of open their home to loving on kids in that way. I don't, yeah, I don't necessarily know why they decided to stop having biological. I'm sure that I've asked that at some point and I just can't remember. So if you were three, then how old were you when you actually started remembering? Um, That's tricky. I think we have like pictures with the foster kids from way back then. So I think some of my memories are probably like mixed in with like those pictures. I don't know. I couldn't say when my first like memory of the foster kids were, but I no, like really early on, they were just like fun playmates. Like I didn't really think anything of it. It was just kids in our home that I got to play with. And my parents always, um, our foster kids were always younger than my older brother and I, we never had them older than us. I think that was, I don't know, they wanted to, since our lives were kind of changing and all up in there, like, I think that was the one thing that they were like, they wanted my brother and I to, I don't know, I guess have like the oldest title all the time so all of the adopted siblings are younger than us and in all foster care they've always been younger than us as well I, mean, I, I it, like in a way it makes a lot of sense but I don't know yeah like kind of like you you don't know how to explain it but like it does make sense what did you think kind of just like oh these are just like my friends that are spending the night yeah I think that to some degree I probably knew a little bit what was happening like they were living with us and my parents probably explained it there was never like oh, these aren't like adopted kids. They never tried to like hide things from us or cover things up. But I think probably when I was younger, yeah, it it didn't really register for me. I can't really remember understanding when we lived in South Dakota is when we started foster care. And I don't really remember much about it until we started again after we moved to Michigan. You're the work that you're talking about that you did for your work, I read. And you said that when you were eight was the first time that foster children came in that you did eventually end up adopting so that was the first brother sister pair we had adopted one other before that in South Dakota actually we adopted one um and then those two we adopted in in Michigan what about that the brother sister duo stuck out to you enough to write about that one specifically 
Um, I think because, so we had fostered them when we were in South Dakota. Um, and then they went back home and lived with their birth mom for a few months um, before being put back into the foster care system. And at this point, my the rest of us were in Michigan. And so my parents found out they were back in foster care and started fighting for custody of them. There were some factors that like the courts didn't want to put them with us because they um, had Native American heritage and the courts wanted to um, keep them with, I don't know. Like people of like the same culture. Yes. Yeah. And so I think that was like a two year, two year process. Eventually we were granted rights of them. So my parents flew back out to South Dakota and adopted them and took them home. Um, And I think what really stood out to me is how different they were from when we first fostered them, as far as you could just tell they had been through way more in those in between years than when we had them the first time. So my sister spent the first couple of I guess months, weeks, maybe like voluntarily mute. She just wouldn't talk to anyone. Um, And then her little brother was super thin. You could see all of his ribs. He was sheet white, like a sheet of paper white and very, very, very angry. Struggled a lot with that. And so, yeah, just you could tell that they had seen and heard and been through a lot of really hard things in those in-between years that um, hadn't affected them the first time that we had them in foster care. I can imagine that it's really hard to have someone live at your house as like your sibling and then they're just gone. Yeah, that is it's difficult. And I think a lot of people give that reason for not like being foster parents. Like they'll say like it would break my heart if they left. And yes, it's true. But also like you're giving them for a however short amount of time like the kid is with you you're giving them a chance for a better life and you're showing them like that they can be loved and what like really being loved is like and everything else. And so I think my mom always says like, no matter how short a time, like it's always worth it because you're, you're giving that kid a chance for a better life, even if whatever. So it is, it's very hard. It, there's been multiple times where I felt like, especially when we were fostering through high school, like my high school years where like I was really aware of how, it affected our family dynamic once the kid was taken away from us. Yeah, because at that time, like your parents were still, they ended up not to like jump around a lot, but they ended up adopting two like young kids, two little, little kids. So at that time, it's like, I mean, it's not like you're a parent, but like you're old enough where it matters. And like you see just these little kids. And I'm sure that that was difficult as well. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's cool too. I don't know. I think probably I struggled a lot with this when they first adopted them, but it just is so fun now to have my youngest sister 16 years younger than me. So like to get to be like a big role model for her and she's excited when she gets to see me because like I don't live with them anymore. And so it's more like, I don't know, I kind of feel like the fun aunt that comes to visit rather than (laughs) like the big sister. (laughs) So when the the brother sister duo came back into your family were they like officially adopted right away or was they were they still in the foster system they were adopted right away because they had been in care as my parents were fighting for custody for them we were able to adopt them when my parents flew out they went to court right away and adopted them and then flew them back home with us or with them i guess i wasn't there but Um, My other brother that we adopted in South Dakota, we had him for probably close to a year before we officially adopted him. Yeah, I don't know if you know how how that all works. Plus, I'm pretty sure it's different everywhere. But is there like a, a time limit on how long someone can be in foster care before you can adopt them? I think that there is. I would wouldn't know that number off the top of my head. But I also know it has to do with usually when a kid is first put into foster care, their birth parents still have like rights for custody of them. So they get to like visit with their birth parents occasionally and everything else. And usually the birth parent is like going through classes and trying to prove that like they're capable of still taking care of the child. Um, And if they don't, I guess, like pass essentially, then that's when the kid gets, that sounds terrible, but like put up for adoption when they are no longer a foster child, but can be adopted. Um, And so at that point, if the family is licensed for adoption, so like our family was licensed for foster care, but we also were, my parents were also looking to adopt. And so you can do that. 
There are some families where they're only licensed for foster care. And so then they can either choose to like keep the child as a foster child until they're old enough to be out on their own, or um, they can move them to a different home that is looking to adopt. Yeah, I didn't know any of that. It, it's so, it feels so confusing. I don't know if it is, but that whole uh, like foster and adoption system just seems so complex and confusing. I do not understand it at all. It is. And I, I may not be correct in some of that. I think it varies like state by state too. So I'm, you might need to fact check some of this, but I think that like all the states are different, all the agencies can be different, the different areas are in. It's so confusing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So during like after that happened, then you had other foster kids come and go. Yep. We. Oh, I think I don't know like an exact number because I know we had foster kids coming in and out, and then um, my parents did a lot of respite care for other foster parents, which is basically just like they take someone else's foster children for a short amount of time to give them like that family a break. So we did that for like sometimes weeks at a time. Sometimes it was just a couple of days, but. So kind of having all these people coming and going and then also having new children adopted into your family. How do you think that it made you view your family differently than other people might have? Again, I think when I was younger, it was just fun to like have someone to play with someone like a playmate all the time. But when I got older, and I started thinking about like how different my life was than everyone else's, I think it really hit me like my family was so abnormal. Like when my brother and I got older, and and then we had siblings who were 14 and 16 years younger than us, like you can't go out and do all of the things that like other families who have kids our age are doing because we have to be home for a nap time or we have to be back early to get them to bed on time or with all the trauma issues that these kids are coming with like you don't want to go on public often because almost anything could set off like an explosion or make them angry or or scared and so there was a lot that I felt like we couldn't do and I think especially through high school that was really frustrating to me or even like at soccer games or things like that like instead of my parents being able to just like sit and watch me, they were focused on chasing kids around and making sure they weren't running into the street or something. So just like little things like that, which I feel like is probably similar to most people who have siblings who are a lot younger. That's probably the case. I think the difference is a lot of like the trauma behaviors that we were also dealing with at the same time, the anger and everything else, like didn't really know what I was going to come home to on any particular day. Like we had so many broken windows in my house because when a sibling had an angry outbreak, the first thing to go was like rocks were thrown or something was getting ripped out of the yard and thrown around or things like that, that I felt like I should not have be having to deal with this from my own siblings. Like my home should be a safe space that I can come escape to. And instead there's so much walking on eggshells that is happening um, within like the place that's supposed to be the safest. So now that you're older and you're looking back on it, are you like, oh, maybe it's that way for them because for them, their home was never a safe place to begin with? I think it's really hard when you're living it to see it from like the outside. Like this is why this goes on this way. And so when I like moved away and was able to kind of get the outside perspective, I was able to have a lot more grace for their situation. But yeah, living living in it, it's really hard to know like, okay, they they treat mom and dad this way because they never knew someone who loved them and who wouldn't leave them. And so no matter how hard you try to like reassure them or essentially like fix their brokenness, like the damage has been done and you can't reverse the past. So like you can try to move forward and and reassure them and comfort them and and give them a safe home and three meals a day and everything else. But especially so early on when the brain is like first forming and they're going through all of that, like you're creating really negative neural pathways. And so, yeah, they have to relearn essentially everything that or unlearn that they use as like protective mechanisms when they were first growing up. So when you say like your family wasn't normal, do you mean in terms of like that kind of thing or in terms of like your siblings are adopted? But I I do feel like a lot of people around here shockingly adopt people or like adopt kids. Um, So what what did you feel about it wasn't normal? 
Well, I think probably looking back, it was like an incorrect assumption because I was like, my family's so dysfunctional and like all of the stuff that's going on, nobody else has to deal with. But I think looking back now, like every family has its problems and it like, just because my family struggled with this particular thing, didn't make us more dysfunctional than the next family who is struggling with something different. And so I think that kind of has been something that I've learned after processing a lot of this, like Sure, my family wasn't normal, but what family is and who even knows what normal is? Yeah, and like you said, like you're the one living in it. But if you're, I guess, like also living in somebody else's life, it'd probably be kind of the same thing. But that makes sense. I mean, I think it's probably like it was a bit unstable for you too, right at the time, because there's just so many people, so much going on all the time that in its own way made it a bit unstable for you. Um, like at the beginning of this, when I said that all I knew about you was that you were very quiet. Um, do you think that that came from other people being louder in your house? Like I have a big family, not in terms of I only have one sibling, but like just overall. And so when everyone's together, it's like super loud. So I'm like kind of I'm a, I would consider myself maybe less now, but growing up, like I was very quiet, didn't talk. Would you say? that for you, it was similar. Like there was just so much else going on. You just kind of retreated. I think so. I think that definitely played a big role in it. I think naturally I'm an introvert, but I think that that probably caused even more of it. But yeah, I think the loudness, but also just siblings who had lots of needs and always needed mom and dad's attention. And so I think I learned how to be pretty independent pretty quickly. And like, I don't know, almost to a degree felt like I couldn't have needs because everyone else was like, I guess when I was young, like being bad and mom and dad were always getting after them or figuring out how to deal with one explosion or another. And so I was like, well, if I can cause less stress for them, then I'm, I'm going to do everything I can for that. And so, yeah, I think that caused a lot of uh, quietness, but also like perfectionism, like struggled really hard to be helpful because I felt like being helpful was the only way I could be noticed. Do you think there's any other ways besides that, that it kind of shaped your personality or who you are as a person? A lot of middle school and high school, I was really bitter towards, I think my parents, but also like my siblings for, I think maybe like I put the perfectionist that I made myself on them, like, because you're this way, I have to be this way. And so like, I don't know, it didn't seem fair that I had to grow up so fast and that I wasn't allowed to have needs and all of these things that I had made up in my head that weren't true, but that made me really bitter. And so I think, again, moving away and like getting space from it all gave me like a perspective of like, but how cool that like, this is what my family was called to do. And I get to love these kids who like really needed it. And I think, I don't know, as far as like the bitterness goes, I think that really helped me learn a lot about how to forgive and how to be gracious and compassionate. And I don't think that I still really do that well. But I think that's something that I got to have a a really cool like front row seat to learning how to do. Or do you have any like besides what you've already said specific like good things or challenges about being I don't know what would you consider yourself because you're not a like you would say like a foster parent. But what would you say? You're not really. I don't know. What would you consider yourself to be? Yeah, I I've struggled a lot with like defining that because I don't know like I've for my work project I was doing which I I had to do like a lot of research into that and so I was looking for like what what specifically would like my older brother and I be called in this situation and so I learned that there's like an adoption triad which includes like the biological parent the adoptive and foster parent or adoptive slash foster parent and then like the foster adopted child. But my brother and I are completely left out of that, which I feel like is pretty unfair because we're also being directly affected by the choices that these other three parties are making. I think that I found that we were called like the adoptive siblings. So I think that's what we would be classified as. But anyway, what was your question? What were you asking about that? What are like some other, if you have anything else, other like good things or just challenges um, that you think a lot of people probably face, including yourself when they're in the situation of being the, what do you say, adoptive siblings? I think as far as challenges go, like a lot of people don't understand like 
like I was saying earlier, adopting or like fostering a child doesn't just like make their trauma go away. Like my mom said one time that like you're not creating a new story for them. You're just writing a new chapter in the story that already exists. And so I think that's something that's really important for people to understand before they jump into this. Like it comes with a whole lot of hurt for every person involved. I think my parents would even say like they didn't realize how much that it would affect my older brother and I. I mean, even probably didn't understand some of the challenges that would come with their adopted kids. Like I think to some degree they were prepared, but I don't think they were prepared for like how much life was going to change and how hard things were going to be and how hard things still are um, because we're still going through struggles with some of those kids. And so I don't know, I feel like that's a challenge and something that people before just jumping into this and trying to be like, rescue a kid that really needs help or whatever, like, yes, they do. But also like, people need to understand how much their lives will change. As far as like good things, I feel like looking back now, I would not change anything about how I grew up because it like, I don't know, I always had someone to play with when I was younger and having a big family was so much fun and looking back on like I don't know the laughter around our dinner table at night and how like one person would get going and then everybody else would just kind of like feed off of them and I don't know just joke and and so that was fun and so many memories were made because of how many of us there were and um, how many challenges but also like really good things that came with that Um, I think as many hard days as there were there were like two good days that that came along with it too. And as rocky as some of my relationships with my siblings were, like a lot of them have been really redeemed. And I can say that some of them are like some of my best friends now. So I think that's like a really cool thing as well that has come from this. And to know like, even though we're not blood related, like they're as much my family as my parents or my older brother is too. When you, especially when you were younger, I guess, how long did it take you for it to sink in that these people were now your siblings? Or was it just kind of always around? So it like if if your parents have been fostering since you were three, since you were this was something you were always around, did it just never occur to you anything different? I think that's probably the case. Like it just it's just the way life was. And so like, especially like the youngest ones, I didn't know any different with the the most recent adoptions, I think that was more like that this is the way it's been for several years like we've been fostering them for this long so like at this point it's just making things official changing their last name now we know we'll have them forever but for for the last several months of fostering them before you adopt you already know that it's just like the formality of like signing the paperwork and stuff and so like nothing really feels different i guess and i yeah i guess especially for the younger ones like It's just the way life was, and I didn't know any different. Do you have any advice for someone in your position that is the adoptive siblings or a sibling or the, uh, because that that is different than being like a child in a house with foster kids. So maybe both of those. I would say it's really important to find like a safe outlet. Like I know I had several people that like were just my people that like my foster adopted, adopted siblings, like had access to but like, when I hung out with them, it was just me and this person or these people. Um, And so like, I had safe places to go and like talk with people and share the things that I didn't feel like I could share with my parents at the time or express the emotions that I didn't feel like I could express when I was at home because so much other stuff was going on. And I think that really changed the game for me. I, I don't, if I didn't have some of those people and had that safe space and had a way to like process my emotions, I don't think that probably I would be the same person that I am today because I see a lot of stuff like this happen and the adoptive or foster sibling with foster siblings just like hold on to the same bitterness that I was talking about earlier and it becomes like a really angry person and um or shows those things in a lot of other ways and like I'm not saying that I'm perfect I struggle with a lot of things now still but I think that that really changed the game for me to have people that I could talk to um in in places people's houses that I could go escape to and I felt like life was too chaotic and I didn't want to be at home at that exact moment. So that was really helpful for me. And also don't be afraid of therapy because counseling is so important. (laughs) I guess, would you say then that your friendships were also very important? I think so. Yeah. I think 
friendships for sure. I had a couple of mentors, um, like my youth pastor and a couple of my youth leaders that I spent a lot of time with that. I mean, even like take me out of school, like at lunchtime and like take me out for coffee or ice cream. Just, I don't know. Like when I was younger, I didn't realize how weird my life was, but I think all of those people knew like I needed to like get away from that every once in a while. And so to like to have those people looking out for me, even when I didn't realize what was going on was good. And then yes, definitely later, later on in college, especially as I started processing a lot of like the hard things, having my college friends to like work through some of that with was very important. And yeah, definitely my friendships growing up, I think were, were really important as well. I did text you before this and say that I felt like this was kind of like a more sensitive topic. Do you also feel like it's a sensitive topic? And do you think that it shouldn't be a sensitive topic or it should be? I think it's sensitive just because so much of this is not just my story. My story is so closely intertwined with all of my siblings who are still walking through some of this really hard stuff that like, it's hard for me to share some of the things that I don't feel my in my personal life are as sensitive, but like to protect their stories and, and some of their hurts. I feel like I can't share that. And also like my parents who are still walking through some really hard things like to not necessarily protect them, but to like honor how they've done things. Like I, I wouldn't want to say anything that would be offensive or hurtful to, to them or my siblings. So I don't necessarily know that it has to be a sensitive topic, but I feel like right now as we're still walking through the middle of some of this, like it is, and it probably will be for a couple of years until we have some, some more of this behind us, if that makes sense. But I feel like there needs to be more of a conversation around like adoption and foster care and like the hurt, especially for like people like me and my older brother were like so often we're left out of the conversation at all. Like there aren't programs for us as there are for foster kids or for adoptive parents and or biological parents. And so I don't know. I feel like that's turning into a little bit of a soapbox for me. And I feel like there needs to be more of like resources for like people like me to to use or to turn to so no that's a really good point because like absolutely all of those other people also need like the resources they have of course but yeah that's true you don't ever really think about the kids if like the parents have biological kids because it seems in a sense like oh they're par- like they're the biological kids like it's their, you know, their part of the decision, but like not really, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying that you then would choose to not have like had the life that you have. I'm just saying like you were three, like it wasn't your decision. Yeah. And like, not even necessarily like that we weren't a part of the decision, but like the decision does affect us. So even if I like, if I did have a say in the matter, which at this point, like I was three, so I couldn't have, but like Later on, when my parents did start fostering again, when I was in high school, like they did ask our opinion. And, and so like, at that point, the decision had already affected me because we'd been doing it before and would continue to because the second time they decided to start fostering, like we adopted two more and our family grew two more people. And so I feel like I don't, it doesn't make sense why people don't think that kids who are already present in the home aren't affected, but like very much so they are and there should be more of a conversation around that or more specifically targeted counseling because they have support groups for foster parents and they have support groups for kids who have been in foster care and all of that but like I I don't necessarily think like my situation is so different whatever whatever like nobody has experienced the same thing but I do think that it seems like people don't see how this equally affects everyone or not equally but like does affect everyone to varying levels but yeah I imagine I mean you can't really speak to this but even because you have so many adopted siblings that like coming out of foster care being adopted and then having like several other kids coming out of foster care being adopted in a sense it's like similar to you because they are already a part of the family and then once again new kids are coming in yeah well and I yeah that's true I think my the first brother that we adopted was part of our family for three or four years before we adopted the next ones. And like, he came into our home through foster care when he was just six months old. So he didn't really know any differently. And so yeah, was definitely part of the family. And probably I, you're right, experienced similar things to what my older brother and I did. um, Because in every sense, except biologically, like he 
was biological. So I don't know if that makes sense what I'm trying to say, but. Yeah, like he didn't know any different because he was a baby. Yeah, so it's exactly. not like he remembers anything besides being in your family. Yeah, I guess I've never really thought about that, but that's true. You don't really hear a lot about about stuff like that. Well, hopefully this will make some people think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> well, thank you. I know this is not always the easiest thing to share about. Um, so thank you for doing this. Yeah, it's been it's been great. Thanks for having me. All right, I'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Bye. Thanks so much again to Skylar for being a guest on the show this week. If you have a story you want to personally share on the show, want to be read on air, or a topic you'd like to see discussed, find us on Instagram and Facebook at Just a Person Pod, or send us an email at justapersonpod at gmail.com. We'll see you next Monday with another new episode.